Welcome to the channel, folks. Plunders and Classics, where I am on the road with the tow pig with my trailer to pick up another project. Or 90% sure it's going to be a project and not a parts car or a quick flip. I think we're going to fix her up. So you can, uh, you already know probably from the thumb thumbnail that it's a Silverado uh, so what I know about it is from the same guy that I bought the white El Camino the 76 red El Camino the 77 gold Malibu from and he sent me a message a few pictures and he said it's an 84, but then he had a picture of the owner's manual that said 81. So, don't know. I can usually tell by the bump, you can tell by the bumper when it's got the signals in it, but no front bumper on it. Uh, it's actually thrown in the bed. There's a slight picture of it, but couldn't tell nothing. It probably bent up, that's why it's off. Okay, so. All he said about it, clear title, uh, said it's not getting power to the ignition. Now what that means, I don't know. Uh, you know. Get power to the ignition, will it run, drive? We don't know. I'll find out when. Problem is this guy just buys them and sells them as is. Sometimes he checks them out a little bit, washes them but really doesn't do nothing major to them. And basically takes the word of whoever he buys it from. So we don't know. We don't know if it runs, drives. Even if he says, oh yeah, I was told it runs, we still don't know until we try it. So after I pick it up, that'll be the first thing we'll do. Bring it home. Uh, get some power to the ignition and see if, see what the problem is see if we can get that thing running don't know how long it's been sitting up if at all uh, yeah but it's red it's got mags on it uh, I'm assuming it's a V8 305 but you don't know might be a 350. Kind of brings back, now it needs a paint job. The paint's all messed up. But that's okay. What's good about it is the interior for one thing. The seat looks great, looks brand new, no rips, nothing. Uh, body looks pretty good, other than the paint. So, that's all I know about it. Uh, 1300 bucks. Which sounds like a bargain. Now it's a single cab long bed. So, you know, the more desirable ones are the short beds, but I like the long beds. But, you know, I need another truck like I need a hole in the head. You know, I don't really need one. But, it's a good deal, make some money on it, add it to the collection if nobody wants it for a decent price. I know a lot of you guys say, oh, those square bodies, they bring a lot of money. Yeah, not down here they don't. I don't know why. As you know, I'll show you to you when we get back home, but I got that one I bought at the auction a while back for 400 uh, I had it advertised for parts, wasn't worth fixing up. I did have a bunch of calls for bed, doors, steering column, but nobody ever showed up. I don't think I've sold anything off that. But anyway, yeah, this one here reminds me of one, I'll tell you a little story while we're driving. Back in the day, I bought an 84, but it was a GMC Sierra Classic. Uh, same as this one, power windows, power brake, power door locks, cruise, tilt, all that loaded 
and uh, I bought it from an auction for about like 400 bucks, fixed it up, didn't need that much, the door was bashed in, I think the side of the bed was bashed in, fixed that up, painted it red, and it was nice, I drove it for years, cold AC even still worked in it. So, uh, I don't know what happened. I had too many trucks, vehicles. I decided to sell it, drive another truck. Well, I put it up for sale on the Auto Trader, which was a go-to place to sell. It was late at night, about 10, 10 o'clock at night, and these three Mexicans, I call them Mexicans. This was in the Dallas area call me up and they show up three of them they want to take it for a ride it's a single cab and I said well I'm gonna have to go with you oh we'll come back tomorrow so I thought that was kind of strange that they didn't want one guy to sit back and have me go with him for a test drive well the next morning now my driveway was full and everything, and I had it parked on the street. Next morning, I go out, truck's gone. They had come back and stole it in the middle of the night. Bastards. Reported it stolen, but never, never. I still got the title for it. Never heard anything from it since. So anyway, it's enough for story time. I think I might have missed the exit. Okay, uh, I'll be back when, it, when we get to the truck. Okay, guys, I got her hooked up and heading home. Got it for $1,200. Uh, it is an 81. Got a clear title. Clear title here for it. Um... The sticker on the Red, Red Eater Sport says 305 or 5.0, 5 uh, but we don't know. It's 42 years old, could have been swapped two or three times. So we don't know if it runs. He said he, he could turn it over by hand, but put the key and a battery in it, it doesn't do anything. It does have a starter on it. Uh, the drive shaft's out of it, but it's in the bed. He said that the guy got it from, had a tow dolly and took the drive shaft out, tow dolly it home. And they don't know anything about it either, other than it was just going to be a project truck. Been off the road since 2014, so about 10 years, not very long in the grand scheme of things. Uh, not a bad truck, but, man, road's rough. Um, it, one bedside has more rust than the other. All rust are above the wheel well and the bottom quarter. So I got that parts truck I bought from the auction. I could either change beds or fix the, the rust on this one. But I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. We may, mainly need to uh, get it running, see if it runs, see if it drives. After that, we can uh, think about doing the bodywork on it, painting her up. Uh, the front bumper is bent a little bit. Don't know if the front bumper on that parts truck is going to be any good. I think it is. So there's a bunch of little uh, stuff I could use off that parts truck. The driver's vent window is busted on this one and it's got a piece of plastic in there. So I'll have to take the vent window out of the parts truck. Anyway, let me get home and we'll go over it. I'll be back. Okay guys, let's take a look at this bad boy. I like the rims. Nice rims, probably mismatched tires, but, and they are, I believe, 15s. Yeah. Okay. 
See, it doesn't look too bad. This kind of brownish had this rust. I didn't realize how bad it was. The other side's not doesn't have rust here. It does have rust there. Uh, missing a stick-on side trim, but get that pretty cheap. I bought a roll of black for that step side that I sold. You can buy the chrome. We'll do that for sure. Probably just paint it one color red. These lights here, I'm sure you can get them pretty cheap. They're just kind of screwy. Uh, yeah, this stuff here, this trim, that's not bad. Okay, see no rust here. Although I think there's some Bondo, but there is rust there. May just take that other bed off the parts truck. We'll go look at that here in a minute. We'll just go over it here. Uh, here's what could have been the problem. Electronic spark control. Yeah, 81. Okay, let's look at the interior. I like this seat. Now oh, it does have a rip right here. Not bad. This is pretty nice. Now this dash at first glance, thought it was a dash, but it's one of them dash covers. And it's cracked right here. But other than that, it's not bad. I'll have to check how much these covers are, but uh, good thing is the windshield's not cracked. Headliner is extremely faded, but no rips and it's not hanging down. Uh, sliding rear window, uh, power windows, power locks, tilt, cruise, uh, reads 89,000 miles, uh, got a, I don't know what's going on there, a Sony CD player, but something's, faceplate's starting to melt or something. Uh, there's the front signal lenses got a temp gauge there uh, got a, a bank thing for a pocket I'll have to see if there's any this one's got the carpet along the bottom carpet's not bad shape here anyway not bad presentable but it's missing here there's a little piece of plastic for the vent window. This door doesn't open from the outside, just from the inside. So, locks goes up and down, but something's not attached. I'm gonna try not to. The power windows, we'll have to check them, see if they work. But it's definitely a fixer-upper. Definitely gonna fix her up, even if it needs a motor or something. This tire here is completely blown out. Uh, that's okay. Look underneath here. Oh, look in the bed. There's the front bumper. Uh, it looks a little bent. We don't know how bent it is. There's the drive shaft. Look underneath, there's no spare. No spare under there. Lots of grease on the rear end. Uh, still got the catalytic converter. Let me see if I can tilt this. Still got the catalytic converter, but it's got dual pipes coming out the muffler. So it looks like a dual exhaust. Uh, really not, just surface rust under here, but and Texas, Texas truck, Texas title. Don't know why it's so rusty around the... Now nah, that's probably normal though. Okay, there's the front end. Uh, it's bent up a little bit. We can probably straighten that out. Looks like they put on a new thing here. It's got new bolts. Uh, this is what we want to check on the parts truck here. This chrome 
the grill itself doesn't look bad just that chrome okay and the hood looks pretty straight no hail damage that's a big plus okay that's what it says here 5.0 liter does it say 1981 on it? Yep, 1981. Okay. Uh, I don't know if this battery is any good. The date is not punched. But uh, it might be a good battery. Check it with the... Okay, but it is a four barrel. 305 four barrel. Oh, an Edelbrock. Edelbrock carburetor on it. With a stock manifold. See, so once you get into these 80s, man, they just got vacuum lines and wiring and crap everywhere. So, it shouldn't be too hard to put a power to the distributor and check it. Everything looks hooked up, even the AC's hooked up. Not bad. I checked the oil, it's full of oil. Somebody started doing something, little zip ties here. Oh, that's for the water gauge. Yeah, they got that hooked up to the factory deal there. Uh, but they don't, they never hooked the cruise up. They got the transmission hooked up. I don't know, 81. I don't know if it's overdrive or not. Okay. Let me uh, know what y'all think about it. There are some dents on it. But not too bad. Nothing that's not fixable. And I don't know what color this is supposed to be. What was this side? Brownish. He thinks this door, the uh, title says 81, and he read off the VIN number, but then this one says 3 of 82, so he thinks the door's been changed, but, man, this must have been on here a long time. A little bit of rust at the bottom of the rockers and the door, the other door's worse than this one. I guess it was a dark maroon. Oh, this might not have been from this truck. Because I think they must have... See, this has been all mangled up here. Uh, they probably changed the fender and the door at one point. Long, long, long time ago. So that might not be from this truck. I don't know if it would have electronic spark control in 81. That seems like a... Now it says it here too. Silverado half ton. But yeah, yeah, here's the rust. This door rocker. Catalytic converter. That can come off. Yeah, definitely going to fix her up, guys. It's going to be a project. Maybe after the uh, El Camino here. Okay, let's go look at this piece of shit I got from the auction a few months ago. Got a video on the auction. If you want to look at it. And uh, this was, I think this was an 81 too. 81, no, an 81 or an 82. But I got it from the auction, which was most of the cars I think it was a makeshift junkyard and this has been sitting in there since who knows how long uh, but look how look how crappy it is the hood cr the uh, windshields busted the distributor a bunch of parts are missing from the engine Ugh. 
see I didn't even try to get it running or anything if it's been all opened up there for decades it's screwed up it's completely rust in there dipstick for the transmission was rust see crap like this cut off just uh way way too much trouble and that says 84 but no it's not an 84 yeah that's right because when i seen that 5.7 i got a little excited but this from another truck uh this one says 305 right on the valve cover there so it's got a bunch of parts i can use there's a vent window assembly there uh, There's a front bumper, but from a newer one because it doesn't have the signals in the bumper. But I got a newer grill, and the signals that go in the grill. So I don't know what I can use there. Okay, we'll have to check over this bed really good. I know it's got a few dents, but no rust. Uh. A little bit of surface rust there, but no rust around there, so it might be best to swap the whole bed. If I was to keep it, I would swap the whole bed, but uh, I got an extra set of doors. Oh, that window's busted out too, isn't it? Got an extra set of doors in case the power, those are power. In case the power windows don't work, we got motors, although I think you can buy them motors cheap extra fender that's bashed in uh you know just look at look at this truck compared to the red one it just needs everything the seats just trashed now there's a piece of carpet we might be able to use for the other door panel oh there's the there's the pockets it's supposed to have uh we'll see what we can buy for this thing that's cheap dash is all cracked just headliners missing completely don't even have the backing to put one on see this would just take way too much work to uh to fix up it, it, it basically probably needs a whole drivetrain then the forklift driver or whatever picked it up and the drive shaft's just bent bent to shit it's no good so they ruined that no title just to auction bill of sale just screwing around trying to get a title would be uh, time consuming and, and expensive so this truck really has nothing nothing going for it whereas the red one has a lot going for it so anyway I don't know what we can do we'll use a little knickknack parts off of this uh, I was hoping for that chrome piece across there but we'll see so yeah this is just a, a parts truck just a parts truck. Now I've had calls on the beds, doors, tilt column, a uh, bunch of stuff, but nobody's ever shown up. So I'll just use it for my own personal personal parts. I think, yeah, and the hood's all bent to shit too. Bent there, rolled under. All rust. Just junk. It's just junk. But it's worth what I paid for it at the crusher, so. But I'm not going to crush it. Okay, well, I just bought some chicken on the way home. So me and Nikki are going to eat some chicken. I'll eat the chicken. She can have the bones. And then after that, we'll get a little gas and the battery and uh, check out check out the power situation here I need one tire to roll it off of here uh, I don't know I need a tire with a a wheel with a tire a good tire on it okay hope y'all can see the potential it's a great before great before picture what it's gonna look like all red with chrome that's how the one that i had back in the day there was all red with uh
chrome put new chrome moldings on it and man it was nice i love driving that truck okay so uh i'll be back He's running. Okay, guys. Okay. Let's turn in the key. And it wouldn't do nothing. Now, you know, the heater's supposed to come on, the gauges, battery gauge supposed to come on. Nothing was coming on, but the headlights worked. So I checked the power out here. And uh, of course, the battery was good. Uh, and it was getting power to here. Okay, so then I thought, well, maybe it's the switch. On top of the column there's a rod that goes across here and connects all the major wires so I pulled the column down rod was moving um, then I took the fuse block I haven't put that back yet fuse block out because this wire here looked fried but it's really for it's for nothing I'm not even sure but it's, it's yeah it's not even going to the fuse block so I look at all the wires, all the wires are good. Uh, so then I go back up here and it's getting power to here and here. There's a connector behind here that connects these two. So it's actually part, it was part of this deal here. So it was getting power, power, and then I went down here, here's a fusible link. And it goes down here, and I scraped a little right here and checked it, no power past the fusible link. So then I go up here, and there was a piece, piece already scraped, and I check it, no power. And this from here to here was just, I don't know if I threw it all out or not, Ah, oh, shit. Let's dump the gas. Uh, I threw all the crap here. It was so taped up with crap. Uh, they were trying to splice it together. And it was all... All, uh... No power going in there. It was all coming apart, burnt up or something. So anyway, I cut this wire here from a junk car. And, uh used a solder connector there it's pretty thick wire it's connected now but there was only a stub coming off of this so i'm not sure how good it's connected but if it don't start i know what it is so i put wire uh connected that and uh started right up and i filled up the floats with gas and uh it was been running for a minute I don't know if there's any gas coming from the tank. It's reading half a tank. She started right up. It's got brakes. Whoop, whoop. Well, the transmission's working, but drive shaft's not hooked up. Oh. Now I can't even turn it off. We'll have to wait to wait till the transmission stops. to drive neutral it won't turn off with the gear shifter down there okay uh, so yeah I don't know if it's running off the tank or not it's a little smoky probably from bad bad gas it's not all moldy and stuff in there now this whole carburetor, this whole thing was jammed forward. 
at full throttle. The dog, the dog, I don't know if they bent something. They did something. Anyway, it's jammed forward, and I had to use a little hammer and bang it back down to idle. Anyway, I gotta figure out what's binding that up. But it seems to run good. I wanna rev it up, but I can't rev it up. Yeah, who knows when the last time it was started. But yeah, nobody could figure out that wiring, I guess. So, uh... Let me uh, see if I can loosen up that carburetor linkage. And I don't want to run it too long. I need to check the water. Well, I checked the water earlier and it was like some in there. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, guys. I got this loosened up. It didn't have any return springs on it. It's supposed to go from here to here. I took this off the old engine out of the 78 El Camino, uh, but they got the transmission thing here hooked up. I guess it's just a kick down. I don't think it's a overdrive. So anyway, I just took it to here and lubed it up real good. Disconnected the fuel line. There's no fuel coming out of there. I should have enough here to start it. carburetor needs to be cleaned out real good got a big hesitation there but although it could still be a little cold there it ran out of gas uh let me see here yeah like I said all the the heater thing works looking under here this wiper switch is all torn apart yeah it ain't gonna work it's all the uh, electrical connections are all messed up so that don't have to be changed uh, passenger window works needs to be lubed up but this window here is just kind of goes up and down by itself so it's not connected uh, I don't know about the stereo. It's not that important. Okay, so we got to determine whether it's got gas in it or not. And clean out the... Clean out the lines. See what comes out of there. Whether it's all dirty or whatever. But I don't have any more gas right now. Uh, so we'll have to do that. Yeah, maybe... It had an air cleaner, got that had that air cleaner on there, so I don't think any rat's nests are buried in it or nothing. Uh, but you never know. Uh, it'll have to be cleaned out real good. If not, it'll have to be taken apart and rebuilt. But I don't never really done an Edelbrock, but uh, so that's next, and then we know the transmission's moving <laughs> because uh, made noise there trying to go into park without the drive shaft. Um, so I got the drive shaft, but see, you can tell this thing's been off for a long time. It's all rusty here, but the caps are missing. Uh, see if the bolts are, and the uh, clips. No, see, they're missing too. Little clamps and bolts. So what I'm gonna do is take it off the parts truck. Man, having a parts truck is really handy. Parts vehicle for anything, really. You can get them new, but... So we'll go ahead and take the U-joint caps, the clamps, the bolts off that parts truck. I need to get up there anyway and cut that catalytic converter off. And it won't roll because the drive shaft's so bent from the tow truck driver at the auction. 
I got to sawzall the end of that drive shaft off to make it rollable if I ever want to move it. So I'm going to do that tomorrow. And uh, yeah, we'll see if she drives. See if we can get gas to it continuously so it stays running. Uh, yeah, I'll probably take at least a tire with air off of there and put it on here and check all these sizes. See, that's a big size. This is a little one. Uh, see what sizes they are. Anyway, and I might have to order at least two. Out of all the tires I got, I just don't have any good 15-inch ones. I don't know how good these are. These are just regular, like, street-type well, let's look at it real quick. They're probably going to be all weather cracked anyway. Uh, 235, 75, 15. And these are 31 by 10 and a half by 15. So, yeah, I don't know how good these are going to be either. A little bit of weather checking, but I'll sell it cheaper as uh, it'll need tires because I'm not going to buy four a set of four tires like these these will just be too much I don't need them that big but uh we'll see what happens five lug see if there were six lug I'd have a set for it but six lug 16 inch uh but anyway guys it's looking promising seems to be running okay it's a little bit smoky but that's uh understandable if it hasn't been started in 10 years i don't know how long that carburetor being frozen up like that it's been a long time since it's been started and it started right up so when i put gas in it and that the linkage was frozen so i just banged it back to so it would idle started it up it started right up and actually idled <laughs> i couldn't believe it so yeah anyway guys it's looking promising so let me come back tomorrow, see what we can do. I can't spend a whole lot of time on it right now because I'm right in the middle of a video on these El Caminos here. So I want to get them done uh, before I do anything major to this. But it'd be nice to get it to drive at least off the trailer and in a, in a spot waiting for restoration. Okay, guys, I'll be back tomorrow. Okay, guys, just out here taking Nikki for a walk, but I didn't move the truck. She's. <laughs> Can you make it through there, Nikki? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, watch out, watch out, watch out. Okay. Come on, come on. Come on, girl. Come on, Nikki. Good girl, good girl, good girl. See, she's not used to stuff in the way. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Okay, guys, I was just going through all the footage there inside, and uh, I didn't want to make this video too long, so we'll just call this video part one. Bought it, got it home, diagnosed the problem, got the problem fixed, got it running. Next video, we're going to go through all the stuff I mentioned from the parts truck there, get the drive shaft in, get it, get it driving. So we can clean out the carburetor, you know, all that stuff. Uh, swap the tire, get it off the trailer. So stay tuned for next episode, and uh, we'll do all that. So uh, tell me what y'all think about it. Let me know if you think it's a good deal. Um, and all that. I know I ramble a lot sometimes, but I want to give all the details on, on everything, especially stuff like, you know, what I paid for it, what it's going to cost to fix it, what it could sell it for, and all that, because a lot of YouTubers don't do that. You know, I just watched, I'm not going to mention any, you guys don't like it when I mention other YouTubers, but just watched an hour's video of a guy bought a, another car, and he rambled on for an hour and uh, he missed the most important thing was what he paid for it <laughs> he didn't mention what he paid for it 
I'm waiting the whole time, like, well, what, what'd you pay for it? So, you know, and then they, they build a car and they don't tell you how much they put into it. They don't, they get rid of them, they disappear on you and you don't, you, you're always wondering, well, what, what happened to that car? What, what did he sell that for? Did he? But uh, this channel is all about doing projects that are practical. I don't lose money on cars, vehicles. So follow me on this one. Well, like I said, we'll do this video and another one, and then it'll be parked for a little while till I get these El Caminos done. And then uh, we'll, we'll get on that, most likely, unless something... See, I never know when something's going to come up. So anyway, that's what my channel is about. So, you know, it's practical uh, build, and I tell you everything, tell you all the details and all that stuff. And Nikki just took off. I don't know... <laughs> She's coming back around again or not. So, okay guys, uh, I usually get a lot of views when I get a new first video of a new project. So if you're a new viewer, subscribe, bottom right hand corner of the screen, just click it, subscribe, and, uh, and like, comment, share it. Uh, Hit the notification bell or look in your subscription, click subscription. My new videos will pop up. So follow along on this build. If you're new, we're, this El Camino is just about done, but I'm gonna paint it. And then this one here, uh, all the mechanical interior, everything's done on it. We're starting the body work at the bumper tailgate. We're gonna fix uh, all the body damage, rust and painter up two-tone with the super sport decals so uh i don't know a month or two we'll get this one finished up and then uh well depending on the weather but the weather's been pretty good and we'll get started on this one and i got a couple more projects coming up too so uh got this 86 i rock well, a bunch of people been asking about the i rock but uh, we'll get to it. It's on my mind all the time. I just need a wiring harness, some uh, exhaust things, a distributor probably. And But anyway, that's all coming up. Okay, guys, like I said, let me know what you think about this one. If any of y'all from up north want one, a Texas truck, because I know there's probably not many left up north. They're probably all rotted away, although they made a million of them. Let me know, fly down here and drive it home uh, when I'm done with it or halfway done or something, but they're not worth a whole lot here, you know. Uh, we'll go over what I think it's worth and what I could get out of it. And, you know, that kind of determines how I build it. I can't be buying all new expensive parts and stuff for this. So I'm gonna work with what we have with the parts truck and I don't mind buying the paint, buy some cheap uh, red acrylic enamel, and uh, at least get it all painted up, and uh, we'll see how it goes, see how it drives, see if it needs any any other stuff. But it's not going to be a full restoration with new, you know, new tires, new brakes, new suspension, new exhaust. It's not going to be one of them builds because it's just not worth putting thousands of dollars into it, like it would be on on the El Camino original one owner super sport type so anyway see i'm rambling again okay so thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you next video where we'll get this thing driving and a bunch more work done to it and uh we'll see you then